Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be a good one between the Miami Dolphins and the Houston Texans. With that, let's head over to the space city of Houston, standing by at NRG Stadium. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, on a wonderful fall afternoon in the state of Texas, the roof is open, and we've got football from NRG Stadium in Houston. They do it big here in Houston, and a second ago, it was a Texas-sized welcome for their hometown guys. They're fired up and ready to go as they get set to match up with the Miami Dolphins. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. Stadium in Houston. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. Leading him out is going to be their quarterback. That's the grizzled vet, Ryan Fitzpatrick. One thing that I think Ryan Fitzpatrick doesn't get enough credit for is his toughness. This is a guy who plays through injuries, but it's also being mentally tough, knowing that everyone's always trying to move him out of the lineup, trying to find a replacement for him, yet he continues to battle and has earned the total respect of his teammates. They'll run on first down. Laird, it'll go as a loss of three right away, and it's second down. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Now Fitzpatrick. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bernardrick McKinney muscled his way in for the sack. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. So now after the sack, third and long, and Fitzpatrick and company, a little work to do. Third and long for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. By 20. Check, 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 check. Under 10, under 10, 10. Now the former fourth-round pick, it's Kalen Balazs. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. A gain of three, second down. A look now at the Miami offense. And the play of this offensive line is going to be so important in this game because we saw the sack a minute or so ago. They've got to be able to give their guy time to throw. That means communication and being physical is vital. Otherwise, this could be a long game. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Balazs. A 
one yard gain there following the three yard pickup on first down. And a look now at the defense for Houston. Bernard McKinney is one of the tallest inside linebackers that you'll see in the game, but he has the bulk to go along with it. And I do think that his height is actually an advantage for him. It used to be that you worried about tall guys inside because they had to fight off low blocks. But I think his ability to see into the offensive backfield, see what's going on and read it, allows him to diagnose plays quicker and get there in a hurry. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. And it's caught by Parker. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 34-yard line. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Show some confidence, supreme confidence. Big-time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 34. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Throwing on second and eighth, Fitzpatrick. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab it, and that'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. He wants it all for the end zone, and that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. So on fourth down, Dolphin kicker Jason Sanders comes on. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And that is not going to get there. Oh, he missed it short. It's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Well, that opening drive looked good for a moment there, but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal. And those especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the gate. Now comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. On the ground, this is Lamar Miller. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Watson throwing quickly to Hopkins. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. One thing we do know, He's going to get his catches, so as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. We're set. Great team. Two. the mic. Don't get nervous. It's complete to Fuller, and he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. 
What is that? Great What did you find? Oh, you got deep. Out from the top. Out from the top. A first down carry now for Miller. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now Watson. Eluding the pressure right. He'll try and run it. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Watson going to give this one to Miller. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. But it didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. On second down now, it's Miller, and the play goes nowhere, losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and it's going to be third down and a ways to go here, third and 14. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Couple of plays sent him the wrong way, and now they face a third and 14. Play action for Miller. Now Watson. They'll roll him out right. He may try and run for this. And he's going to get this to the 31, but that is still well short of what he needed. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble, and now fourth down. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. From the right hash, this from 48. Oh, they get to the football, it's blocked. So the next time we leave one of those coaches' meetings and, and we're walking out in the hall and you're like, how come we spend so much time talking about special teams? Here you go. This is why. This is why, right? And look, I'm, I'm right there with you. We hear it every time we meet with coaches, but it is a big part of it. And look at how early in the game this occurs. They block a kick, and not only does it set a tone, it sends a message for the rest of the game. Yeah, so much for our first points of the game. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the blocked field goal. Here's Fitzpatrick. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here he's the one who has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. They'll run here with Balazs. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave them with a third down and six to go. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size and these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half, Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Fitzpatrick looking for his running back, and he's got him. 17 yards for the Dolphins there as they've got themselves a first down. It's a 
It was a solid check down there with pressure coming, wasn't it? It was because you're trying to go through your progression, and when you have that type of pressure in your face, it changes what you're doing and how fast you have to do your reads and able to come back and find him in open space. That's a really nice play. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Fitzpatrick to throw it. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. It is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. On third down, Fitzpatrick. And he can't quite intercept it. Zone coverage, free safety was there. Couldn't come up with it, and now it's fourth down. As my dad used to tell me all the time, when you're going ready to play a big-time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, you better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This from 54 yards away. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Those really long field goals, when they are made, they are things of beauty. But there is a danger to getting them started, isn't there? Yeah, with that low drive, you've got to really keep it low to the ground, don't you, to get that distance. Yeah, hard to just pop it up in the air because otherwise it's not going to get there. So he's got to drive it low in order to have the distance, and that usually puts it in jeopardy, gives him a chance to block it, and everyone knows it on the other side. That's when you get your best jumpers on the other side of the field and try and get up and get it. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the block field goal. Faking the give. Now Watson sliding out of the pocket. Now he'll pull it down. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. First down, it's Watson. He's got Fuller. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Off of play action, it's Watson. And this one grabbed by Darren Fells. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 20-yard line. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. From the red zone now, Watson. He's got his tight end. It's Fells. Now the ball comes loose. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. Through an opening, and there he goes. And a great return as he gets this all the way down close to the 30-yard line. So the turnover forced and a wonderful job on a big return. And how about the convoy that got created to help him get all the way back upfield? I mean, that's the part that people miss on. 
that's practice. That's worked on. It doesn't just happen in a game and everyone rallies. They discuss it prior to, and everyone knows their role when they create a turnover like that. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They run it with Belage. And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Play fake. It's Fitzpatrick. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. A good pickup there, 21 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. This will be their first trip to the red zone. They've got it first and goal to go. A draw play now, Belage. And this is gonna result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight yard line. That's gonna go as a loss of two and it'll be second down. Now that was impressive by the defense. They just got hit for a big pass play, and instead of rushing out and getting back deep to cover, they played their techniques, saw the run develop, and ran to it and made the play. It's second and goal, back to the eight yard line now. Now Fitzpatrick. The quick slant caught. They'll wind up getting seven on the completion, but they'll still be faced now with a third and goal situation. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. On third down, Laird hammering for the goal line. He loses the football, and the Texans scoop it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Partner, you know how often we hear about the red zone, right? From the 20-yard line going in, that scoring zone, getting points on the board. A lot of teams call from the 10-yard line in the green zone. That's your money zone. He fumbles the ball inside the money zone. You have one job, take care of the ball. That didn't happen. And now out comes Houston. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field and to come away with nothing. That's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. What is it that? 19! I'm coming! I'm coming! I'm coming! First carry for Carlos Hyde. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. Only gets three yards there on the heels of the one-yard pickup. Sets up third and six. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. From the gun, here's Watson. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. 
I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. So a much rosier picture now after that last play. Here's first and 10 at the 19-yard line. Watson with a give to Miller. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. We're scoreless after one. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football as they're looking at a second down and nine to go. On second and nine, Watson dumps it complete to Miller. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that's going to lead to a third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall Let's defense? Go. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They go back to the ground now with Miller. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. A small bit of adversity here on what's been a strong drive as they come up second and 12. Out of the gun, Watson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They were searching for the tight end, Darren Fells. But now it's third down. Maybe a little over-anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. Throwing on third down, Watson. It's complete to Hopkins. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. Watson now nearly perfect. Nine of ten in this first half. It's first and ten. A shotgun snap for Watson. He finds Hopkins complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now it's Miller. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. The offense on third down tonight, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. Finding fouls complete. 
And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Watson in the offense going to come up first and 10. And he's 6 of 7 now on this drive. Watson. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive. And finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him. Made it very tough for him to get the ball. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Miller. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. The Texans on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This will be third and five. Here's Watson. Open man. The tight end fails. What a methodical drive. This is turning out to be that time nine yards, and the sticks move again. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. This will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and 10. Out to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And this results in six. Touchdown. Taking it in from 24 yards out. As his guys are first onto the scoreboard here this afternoon. And maybe the defense got so caught up in him throwing the football, they forgot he can take off too. And you often hear about the quarterback being the unaccounted for guy as a runner. Well, even on a passing play, he's unaccounted for as a runner, and he turned it into a nice game. A very nice run, and it turns in to six points. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. So that about as lengthy a drive as you're ever going to see. And the final act belonged to Deshaun Watson in his touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This will be fielded at the six. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try to loosen things up. 
Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. Throwing again here. Fitzpatrick on second and ten. It gets it into the arms of Parker. Complete. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and nine. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. On fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. DeAndre Carter is deep for the Texans. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7 to nothing leads. They don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 17 on the pick up there. The Texans also get a new set of downs. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Now Watson. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, help force the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. On second down, it's Miller. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. To throw is Watson. To throw on third down. And a catch made by Hopkins. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards a carry at the moment. Check pass, check pass. On second down, here's Miller. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. 
Well, that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving a running back a crease to run through, and has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. The Texans on third down. They've been flat getting it done, eight for nine to this point. This time they face a third and two. Now it's Watson. He's going to let this go for the end zone, and that'll be incomplete. Now they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They will indeed snap it to Watson. And that is going to be incomplete. Bill O'Brien rolls the dice, but to no avail. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. But well, it was too far for a field goal try. You don't really gain a whole lot out of a punt, so I don't think you have much of a problem with that, do you? No, not at all. I think it's the right play, the exact right play, because even if you want to play defense and pin them deep, you know how hard it is for a punter to, to knock one dead inside the 10-yard line. That's not, uh, uh, that's not necessarily easily done, so I think going for it there was the right call. They'll start with a give here to Balage, and he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. DJ Reader there on the tackle. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. On the delay, it's Balage, And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be third down. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating it. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. To throw is Fitzpatrick. He's going to let one go deep for Parker. Got a man, it's caught at the six-yard line. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Devontae Parker, 53 yards, as they are now on the board here in the first half. Well, they had gone run the previous play. Nice little setup. This time they go play action. Defense bites a bit, and they hit for a big play in the end zone. So they sold it really well, didn't they? Because of just what you described, they ran it the previous play, come back with the same action, and now they step back and throw it and get a big play for a touchdown. But what happens as a defensive back is your eyes have to go to the right place. You always hear a coach talk about, are your eyes in the right spot? Well, this time the eyes went to the play action. It froze their feet. They weren't moving, and he went on past them and caught the pass for a touchdown. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and we are tied at seven. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. 
And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. A shotgun handoff now to Miller. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. From the gun, Watson. Man open, that's Kiki QT complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. And they'll run it from the gun with Miller. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now Watson, operating from the gun. Fells has it, left side. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 23. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, he usually gets it done. down Miller and an alley to run and down inside the 15 shy of the 10 a pickup of 11 at a Texans first down the CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness and they've got a back that's both we know that he's fast in the open field but man his first step is so quick too it is something isn't it because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field but also when you run those inside runs he can get into the secondary so fast, the linebackers don't have a chance to react. On first down, Watson. This is caught, and he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Same exact result as last play, a pickup of 11. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up. It's seven. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. Back to throw, Watson. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Raekwon McMillan. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? 
Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there and handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Well, here's a good way to kick off a drive complete over the middle. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 17 yards for the Dolphins there as they've got themselves a first down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Fitzpatrick. On the right side open is Gesicki. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Throwing again on second down. Fitzpatrick, and his throw is going to be incomplete. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Here's Matt Hawk now as he'll punt it away for the second time. A big rush by the Texans and they block it. It's picked up and this is a live ball, remember. And he's in. It's a Houston Texans touchdown. Partner, as you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Well, not only did they block it, the awareness to go and grab it and then take it into the end zone for six points. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. Sure. 
this quarterback now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Now Fitzpatrick looking middle, and it's incomplete. All right, that one felt incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss up 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. On third down, Fitzpatrick. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. So the very rare blocked punt, scooped, and returned for a touchdown. What an exciting play. And let's look at Carlos Hyde now. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. First down. First and 10 at the 30 yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. They're running it. Hey, hey, watch this, watch this. To throw is Watson. Yeah, he's going to keep it here. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports halftime report this one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point and you gotta expect we'll see more of the same in the second half and to bring the action your way let's get it right back out to brandon god Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second. It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. 
Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw down field, incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Play action from Miller, now Watson. He'll buy some time right. He's going to take off with it. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Looked at me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield, but that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Give him 11 yards that time on the return, and it'll be Dolphin football. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Only two there on the dump off. It's third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. J.J. Watt coming in to drop it for a loss of eight, and it also brings up fourth. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here's Matt Hawk now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Houston. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. And the drive starts with a completion, left side. And he'll be upended after a gain of five, up to the 25-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. 
Here's a second and five now from the 25. Miller will get it. He has been busy today. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Jerome Baker right there in coverage. This defense trying to do its part, active hands on that play, but their offense hasn't given them much to work with. So they're not going to worry about it. On their side of the ball, all they're concerned about, can they create some scoring opportunities and help out that offense? Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh, what a move. And shutting him off, now open field. Call it a 48-yard punt, give him nine, though, on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they look to throw. And that will be incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense, exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. A shotgun snap for Watson. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Watson, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Vince Beagle, he's the culprit, causes a loss of five, and it brings up fourth down. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. 
What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Here's Brian Anger now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Averaging 50 yards a boot so far as this one's away. Returnable here for Davis. 12 yards on the return that time. And that will come the offense as they take over. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Watch tight. Tight is right. Watch tight. Tight is right. Three down. Three down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there. And now it'll be third down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Fitzpatrick now from the 50. And it's caught by Parker. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Dolphin first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Play action now, Fitzpatrick. This one into the hands of the running back, Belage. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Now Balazs. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. On third down, Laird. And down inside the 15 he goes. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. And to give this time to the tailback. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up.
Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Again, it's Balazs. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Eighth play of the drive, fourth coming, and they need eight yards on third down. Fitzpatrick to throw it. And that is caught, but the back judge right there to say incomplete. Blanketed coverage by Houston. Makes it fourth down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Sanders' kick is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So this time the protection holds up for him just fine, and he's able to bang it through. I think their special teams coach got the point across. He gave him a pretty good earful after the block earlier. And this time, there's no penetration, so they're able to pick up three. to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now Deshaun Watson and his offense heading back out there. How do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. Let's see if we can drive the bus here again on this drive. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Watson on target here to Fuller, and they're able to get this one across the 35. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Back in the first quarter, you said it. They need to avoid the big play, but he just got a big one right there. You can't relax, you know. We talked about it in the first quarter, but as the game progresses, still opportunities, and he took advantage of one there. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 39-yard line. They'll try the right side here with Miller. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. From the gun, here's Watson. Open man, the tight end fouls. 
Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Here's a give to Miller. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. And he'll get this down close to a first down at about the Dolphins' 13-yard line. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid-type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. And that'll hurt the average a bit, as this time they're able to get him behind the line. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Well, they have had success when he keeps the ball running it, but not in that situation. I mean, I think we got an example of why NFL coaches really don't like their quarterback in the running game. Because whether he keeps it or not, he's likely going to take a hit, isn't he? No doubt about it. And defenses, they're looking to put that hit on a quarterback. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. A 31-yard attempt. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag, and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This is taken at his four. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. 41 80. The drive will commence with a run by Balazs. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. We've become so accustomed to it, you, you sort of take it for granted. You really do, but he is so good that every team in his division, every year, is trying to make sure they draft people charged with trying to block J.J. Watt. So far, hasn't been too successful. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. Caught, it's Wilson. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Didn't have a receiver up and downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And now out 
comes Houston. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three yeah. points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Now after the loss, they come up second and 11 from the 19-yard line. Now a 20th carry of the game for Lamar Miller. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. going to do it for this third quarter of action. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Off of play action, it's Watson rolling to his right. He may try and run for this. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. Here's Brian Anger now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. Oh, he shifts past him. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. To throw Fitzpatrick. Now a short one to Gesicki, and he'll get up to the 43-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Back-to-back -back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Operating from the gun, Fitzpatrick. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Again, it's Fitzpatrick. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Give him two yards on that play, and that's going to bring up a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. On third down, Fitzpatrick. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 36. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. 
I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. They'll throw again, Fitzpatrick. And this is caught. It's Parker. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That one goes for 24 yards. Patrick. And a completion to Wilson. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. The completion good for three and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. To the air again, Fitzpatrick. And down he goes. Fitzpatrick sacked. Enough takes to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. So now after the sack, third and long, and Fitzpatrick and company, a little work to do. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be tackled right on the 10, well short of the first down. He gets a good chunk of yards there, eight all told, but they're still looking at a fourth down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. The kick by Sanders is good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. So an interesting call there to take the three. I mean, I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied, but, you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the air. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there, hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play, and then they'll have a chance to attack. Sanders to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. Dances by him. He'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. The safety, Rashad Jones brings him down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. They'll run it again with Miller. 
And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. The second down play results in a loss of two yards. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. Hey, d let's get in there. Let's get in there now. Throwing on third down, Watson. They'll roll him out right. He can run for it, and he will. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. Here's Brian Anger now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Getting set to go again on offense, here's Devontae Parker now. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. The Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. A good pick up there, 26 yards. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. So first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 44-yard line. From the gun. Fitzpatrick, and nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Here's Fitzpatrick. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Now, he's been a busy man out of the backfield. They've looked his way quite a bit so far in this game. Nice job there defensively, though, adjusting, because a couple of his earlier catches, he was wide open. Not that time. You mentioned the key word, adjustment. A better cover man on him now in space. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Now Fitzpatrick. And that is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. 
The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. Well, they're gonna have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they wanna ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You wanna pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And that's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defense coordinator, body after body, getting to him before he can get started. On second down, Hyde. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. So that last play gives them a little more space now. Here's first and 10 at the 16-yard line. Watson's throw pulled in by Hopkins. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Well, clear running situation. Trying to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play. Set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit them over the top. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Let's get it together, defense. Let's get it together. Now Watson. It's complete to Fuller. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. On the jet sweep, here comes Fuller. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are gonna tell you, if I'm gonna run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They got to feel pretty good about that one. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. He's got Fuller. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. I'm going from back to you. I'm going from back to you. Now a first down throw. Watson. He'll run it. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead. Right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. They go play action here on first down. Sliding out of the pocket. He's going to take off with it. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after him, and they get upfield, get that great push, and what do they create? Space, and he takes off. First down, Miller able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. 
That's a gain of four here in the fourth quarter with them leading by four on the scoreboard. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? And this is caught. And that could seal it. It's a touchdown. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to solve this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays, and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. A 10-play drive that time, and it results in the Texans finding the end zone. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbair now to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so Let's they'll go. bring it out to the Let's 25 go. on the touchback. Fitzpatrick and the Dolphins now. Down by 11, just under two minutes to go. They need a touchdown with a two-point conversion and a field goal in either order as they've got it first down. Let's set a tone, fellas. Let's set a tone. On first and ten, Fitzpatrick. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six-six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it, it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Now an open man. That's the tight end, Gasicki. It's complete. Seven yards there and a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Fitzpatrick now to throw on first down. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Dolphin first down. One of the selling points at the end route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. And we've reached the one minute mark in this game. Now a play fake here on first down. Throwing left side, it's complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. First down now, but that clock rolling. From the red zone now, Fitzpatrick. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. The former first-round pick, Vernon Hargraves, the one who was there defensively. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Second down, looking to throw, Fitzpatrick. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. It'll be a gain of four. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack 
is a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. On third down, Fitzpatrick. Back of the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. So now here comes the field goal unit again, and this phase of the game has been an absolute disaster so far. This to get it back to a one-score game. Sanders' kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. The clock showing 19 seconds to go. And this will be recovered by the Texans. So victory appears to be in sight. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. First down, a run with Hyde. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Again, it's high. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. down and more inside the 20. And he takes it in for the score on the game's final play. So it doesn't affect the outcome, but a little whipped cream on top to their ending. Or as our friends in Bayou Country would say, that's a little land, yeah, a little extra on top. Well, they got the touchdown, but a little risky, even though where they were to run the football in that situation on the final play. If they give it up somehow, if turnover is created and they take it back the other way, Instead of a comfortable victory that they've got now, they've got a lot of explaining to do about why they tried to run the ball in that situation instead of just taking a knee and icing it. But thankfully for them, they won't have to do any explaining. So we had action to the very end of this one, the score on the final play that they didn't need to have. They didn't just run out the clock, though. They added to their final total. Played it all the way to the end, and you know some coaches preach that and tell their teams, that's what I want all the time and they feel like if they don't do it themselves, they're not living up to the message that they're sending out. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.